Amen. All right. The title of my message this morning is Purposeful Patterns. Tell your neighbor, Purposeful Patterns. Tell your neighbor, Purposeful Patterns. The need for transformation. Transformation is the wholesome process of change at the core and the heart from one form to another. It's wholesome and it's based um, on impact that is spiritual, physical, and mental. I'll say that again. Transformation is the wholesome process uh, of change at the core, the heart, from one form to another. This is a wholesome process we're talking about, and it's based on impact that is spiritual, physical, and mental. When we talk about transformation, we are not talking about a partial change. We're talking about a total change. When we talk about transformation, we are not talking about bits and bobs here. We're talking about a whole new thing entirely, from one form to another form. There is no, there is no sort of influence from um, the old form to the new form. It's a completely new, different form. That's what we mean by transformation. Uh, and I know the title I gave was Purposeful Patterns, the Need for Transformation. And I'm going to link up purpose and transformation because while I was contemplating on the word, I, I wanted something that I can apply to myself. Because one of the things that we battle as Christians is we're always trying to find purpose in every moment of our lives. Purpose is not a destination, it's the process of life. So why am I here today? What am I meant to be doing today? What is the cause of today? What is the cause of tomorrow, of what I've heard about tomorrow? What exactly needs to happen ne next? And um, one of the things that we battle with is walking in line with purpose in which God intends um, but our ability to live a life of transformation is directly connected to us walking in purpose. And I will explain. I didn't say that God did. I know some of you know that song. Um, I, have not, I have not come up with these texts. It's in scriptures. And we'll go through some of these things. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Um, the NIV says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What the word has said explicitly to us here is, we need to be able to experience God's will by reason of transformation of our minds. So for us to experience God's will, there needs to be a transformation of the mind. Because one of the questions that I know a lot of people ask a lot of the time is, I need to know my will. I need to know what, what I'm meant to be doing, what my purpose is. I need to know what God's will for my life is. But I'm going to break down a few things. But just the, the, the top surface point of it is, there has to be a transformation of your mind which affects your totality, your wholesomeness, for you to begin to walk in line and in purpose with God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 Therefore, if any person engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creation altogether. That's what I mean by wholesomeness. It's not part partially. The old, the previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. And then in context of this, this is what is entailed in the newness. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9, he says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him, which is the word, who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may practice, you may participate in the divine nature. Do you get what I'm saying? The divine nature is the pattern. Um, as we read earlier, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measures, then they, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever, but whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Heavenly Father, Lord, through your word, teach us the truth, correct our faults, rebuke our errors, and instruct us in the way to live, that in everything we do, we will please you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I hope I can cover as much as I intend to cover today. There is a true nature God intends for you to be effective and productive based on his will. Let's establish that fact. There is a true nature in which you have to be for you to be productive and effective based on God's will. Until you move away from the old patterns and the old you and follow his reflection in you through transformation by his word, you do not experience God's will, which is his plan. It's in the Bible. We just read that. We have to be a different us, a different you, for you to be able to walk according to God's plan. There is no point of Christ coming to do what he has done for you to remain the same and expect that you'll be walking in purpose. So this is the thing here. Do not get it confused. Each time you find yourself trying to find what your purpose is, try to sort, try to look after your connectivity with the one. Try to gauge your connectivity with God because each time you connect yourself wholly and truly to God, it allows you to engage in what God has divine, has created divinely for you as what I call divine nature. So many of us want to live in purpose that requires a divine nature, but we are still remaining who we are. We cannot walk according to God's plan and his will if we are not living in the divine nature, as I read in First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9, there is a divine nature that our, post, our, our, our purpose attracts and connects with. But we have got this idea all wrong. I said this in the first service. The devil has, has consciously been able to lie to the church, has been able to lie to us, so that this simple fact, we do not get it right. As a result, we walk out of line. You cannot come to God and remain the same. You cannot come to God and remain the same. There is a certain glow and that comes through you and people around you, around your space will feel it. And they might not understand what it is, but they will experience a change in you. You cannot come to God and remain the same. I will say this again. The world is teaching us. The pattern of the world says, you can just do what you need to do. Be you. Enjoy yourself. Express yourself. That's the word. But God is saying you have to experience a transformation for you to fulfill purpose. Because now, what we are talking about is the scripture we read earlier in Corinthians where he says, do not conform to the pattern. There's a way the world does things. There's a way the world thinks. There's a way the world operates. The way the world thinks is come as you are. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve, however you are. Yes, by the world standard. Yes, you can. But by the plan and the purpose of God. Because don't mix them together. It's two different things. When it comes to the plan and the will of God, there's a certain divine nature that you need to possess for you to begin to walk in line with God. Amen? Amen? You cannot come to God and remain the same. Even the, the calf worshippers, when Moses came down from the mountain, they knew something had changed. They knew something was different. When you are out, out and about, you're doing your daily life, you say you are a believer. Can people tell that you are a believer? If you, the person next to you is exactly as you are, you talk the same way, you act the same way, you behave the same way, what is the change? You tell them, imagine you are the same as someone and you tell the person, I, you, I want you to come and change. God can change you. The person's question is to what? When, I'm, when you are exactly like me, what exactly am I changing to? What do we reflect? What do we show? Do we show that we are a different person from when God called us, cleansed us by, from our sins and called us into a new light? of a newness of our calling with him. What exactly do we actually reflect? That will tell you a lot about how in-depth in your purpose with God. The more you are able to transform, the more you are able to change your mind, the more you are able to focus on God rather than the way the world operates, the more you are walking into and in line with the word of God, the more God is revealing himself. They come to me and I'll come unto you. So the more you are revealing yourself to him, the more he's revealing himself to you. So the only way you can experience God and his purpose for your life and his will for your life is by accepting and drawing yourself into the transformative power of God. Amen? Amen. Right now, what we have is a transformed church based on humanity. The world is dictating what happens in church. 
The world is dictating the world in church. So we've gone out, we've gone on social media seven days in the week, and then we come to church. As a result, the world in us is contesting the world that is meant to come into us. And we're watching why we're finding it difficult to walk in line with God. We are stuck to the pattern that the world is presenting to us. We are stuck with the ways the world is presenting to us. They, they say this is how to date. This is how to find a job. This is how to relate with people. This is what you do. If someone does this, give it back to them. All of these things, the world is dictating patterns to us. And as believers, we are questioning the world that God is saying that stands in opposition to the world that the world is saying. That's what's happening. I have to be real with you because we are talking about purpose and the reality of it. We want to walk in line with the purpose of God. But what is it that is stopping us from walking in that line? It is the innate nature within us that we are refusing to adapt to his word that is not allowing us to walk in line with God. We are still stuck to the pattern of the world. If I tell you something that the world says, it's easier for a lot of us to believe what the world says because it just sounds Nice. It rings it better to the ears than what the word is saying. And I know that because I've seen a lot of things online. I'm online as well. I see loads of things, opinions of people, and I'm seeing a lot of people following the opinions of the word that has no basis. But here we have the word of God with a strong base that has an end. See, God is a God who knows the end from the beginning. He has designed you for everything that needs to happen. His word will come to pass. He has told you everything. He says the, the end is, and the, you got the end and you got the beginning. And everything is setting with God. That's what we, we prayed about on, on Wednesday. It's setting. God has given us that word. But yet, we are following the voice of a man that is not certain. That's what we choose to believe. I said this on the first service on, on a Wednesday. I, 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 I just to show the, give the, that little experiment of that word. I gave a, a word on Wednesday. I said a simple line. And people were struggling to just accept the word. Just one line. I said, I didn't say it. It's in the Bible. Well, people were struggling, you know, say, um, well, um, you should not commit adultery. Uh, yeah, w- what, is, what is adultery? <sighs> what is Adultery that is adultery that is what is adultery. That is my question to you now. So that we can keep going back and forward. Adultery is adultery. But what we want as humans, the way the world has done it, they've divided adultery into different parts. So as a result, we find ourselves sitting down in worldly layers of adultery. Not knowing that that's just a way for the enemy to keep you locked in. Because if you know that something is life or death... You will choose one or the other. You will not go into one thinking that there are different levels of survival because that is what the world is doing. The pattern is trying to give you different levels of survival without knowing that the reality of it is life and death. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we are following worldly values rather than being transformed by the world, by the word. The world pattern is what is transforming the church. Do not be happy with the same old you. Fight for more. That's what we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. Do not be okay with the old you. For you to experience something different, there has to be a new you. You cannot experience the change that God desires for you with the old version. What I am seeing is a lot of people who think that they can just be who they want to be. And then they say, the Bible says, come as you are. Let me explain what that scripture really means. Because before I come here, I have to prepare myself. Before someone goes away and says, oh, he didn't explain that. Let me explain to you. When the scripture talks about come as you are, God knows that a lot of the time when we come to him, it's easier for us to sometimes put our burdens and put what we are carrying aside and put it somewhere else in doubt, in disbelief, in our, in our ability, to, our lack of fight, fight and faith and come to him and say, oh, I am ready. But God knows that once you come to him and you leave, you are going back to pick up those things. So what he's saying, come as you are, is bring those things with you so that I can take it off you. So that when you leave, you will never see them again. So that's what he means. Come as you are. Does not mean come and remain as you are. So don't get it twisted. There's no way in scripture that God says, come as you are. Anything that God tells you to come with, anything that God tells you to bring, God never leaves it the same. He says, come as you are, right? When God told Moses to say, what's that you have, you have got in your hand? I can use anything. But guess what? Was it a staff that God used to create the change in Moses' mind? He transformed the staff into what? A serpent. 
So there is always transformation. See, for God himself, I'm going ahead of myself, but I'm just feeling that I'm speaking to, through someone here. There is a word for God himself. There has to be redemption. For us to experience redemption, there, a new version of him had to come by the reason of death on the cross so that he can reveal version two that we have the power of life and death in his hands. So you can see the process of transformation for power and purpose. So how much more we? There has to be transformation for us to experience a, an ideal walk with God. So when you walk around and say, no, I don't know what my purpose is, I tell you, go and connect with God. Because it's not about purpose. People are looking for a thing rather than a process. It's not about a thing. It's the work. That's why if you listen to the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, when it talks about the promises and the nature, it talks about with faith, find kindness, find perseverance. It is those innate natures that begin to imbibe themselves in you that will begin to open the path and begin to make connectivity that will bring the plan and the will of God your way. Did somebody get this? Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your call, <laughs> your call, I may be milder in this service. First service, they got it. I think maybe because I'm, on, I'm online. Because maybe we just take one part of what you are saying and then use it. I, I would like it, part of it to be, to, you know, but it is well. The call that you have upon you, the version two of you, only recognizes the call of God upon your life. <laughs> the version two of you only recognizes the call of God upon your life. Many of us have come to God as version one. And instead of us to follow the transformative process to head to version two so that we can engage with the call of God, what we are doing is we are upgrading to version 1.967842. And God is saying, I don't need an upgrade of your sin. I don't need an upgrade of your inability. I don't need an upgrade of that habit that you're using to let go. I don't need an upgrade of the things that have held you down. I don't need an upgrade of the things that take you out of nature according to what I've designed. I need a whole new you. He says this in scripture. I didn't say it. He's there. He said, you are a whole new creation. All things have passed away. And all things have become what? New. Not some things. All things have become new. Meaning that the version that God walks with cannot be the you that comes to him for salvation. It has to be a transformed you. But it's process by process. As you come to him, he's revealing more to you. As you come to him, he's revealing more to you. That's why the word is a lamp onto my feet. So he's revealing more as you are walking in your path. And that's how we walk in plan and purpose with God. So when people are asking me, I don't know what my purpose is, it tells me a lot about where you are spiritually. And this is not about just you, even myself, because we get to that moment in our life sometimes. And that sometimes is a wake-up call that we have disconnected from God. That's why we are feeling a sense of emptiness. We need to wake up and find what exactly where God is. Because the minute we latch on to God, revelation comes. The minute we hold on to God, there is an opening. We have what I call insight and not just eyesight. We begin to see where God wants us to be. Not by you saying, oh God, what am I meant to be doing? Just by being connected to God begins to open things on your behalf. Version two. You, let me give you an example. If you have been to, I don't know if any of you have been to Mercedes, um, shh, sorry? Mercedes World in Surrey, where they kind of like test some of their engines and things like that. They will take a regular AMG and put in a Formula One engine in it. You will know once the car moves that this is not a regular car. The way the car will move, when a car moves off and your head slams the headrest, you know something is different. And I had to ask, like, what sort of car is this? He said, yeah, this is not a regular AMG. It has a Formula One engine in it. But guess what? For that car to be able to compete with the Formula One car, it needs its engine to change completely. You cannot take the regular car engine. When they say Mercedes McLaren, you can't take a regular McLaren car and put it on the racetrack. It will not survive the race. Because the speed at which they move is in a whole different level whole different level. So, trust me, I, I thought I, I drive quick, let me, because I'm online, before they go and 
take my message to transport officers and he said, yes, we recognize you on many cameras in London. <laughs> it's a whole different speed enter. Me, I, me, ask my wife, me that I feel like I can, I can move. I had to be telling God, bros, gently, bro, brother, please, gently, gently. I, I have plans for the future. Please. He said, oh, there's a stunt that um, Hamilton did here. I said, hey, bro, do, bro, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Say, oh, you don't want to see it? I say, look at me. Do I look like I want to see it? <laughs> don't do it. And he, gladly, he didn't do it. But I saw speed in a whole new way sitting down in those cars. But as I said, you can only experience that if there's a total transformation of the engine. You can't go and say, oh, Father, I need this car. I need my, my, I need my, does anybody, uh, yeah. Toyota Paris. I need my Toyota. <laughs> I need my Toyota Paris to be able to drive in this particular. I can't call anybody because Yaris. Somebody might have a Yaris. Why you want me to call Yaris? What is this? Eh? Oh, you have the Toyota Yaris. And he's like, what's the, what's the name of your car? And hey, let's use your car. <laughs> you know, I, I can't say, oh, yeah. Why is my car not moving fast like like the Bentley that just passed me in three seconds and just pressed? And why is it not moving like that? No, all you need to do is change the car and it will adapt. Change the car and it will match up. Change the car and then you see performance. That's what God is saying. Many of us want to remain who we are, remain the way we are, and see change. We want to be what we are and experience purposeful living. It is not possible. It's not possible at all. And I'm being honest. And what I'm saying to you is not spiteful. It's encouraging. Because now, this is a revelation of the world that all I need to do to walk in line with the purpose and the plan that God has called me for is for me to walk in line and attach myself to what God is saying at each moment for me to experience God in a whole new way. Amen? Amen. You cannot walk in line with his will for you with the old version. What we think is purpose a lot of the time when you're walking in your old version is self-will. It's not the will of God. If you have the same nature and character, not the new nature of God, and you are doing things and you think things are working, trust me, you're not walking in line with God. You're not. You need to know that there's a transformation within your life. You need to be experiencing that transformation in your life. Only your version 2 can initiate protocol. The minute you get into version 2, heaven initiates protocol as to the change of nature and the things that you align yourself with. It's not you. You have no power to align yourself with things. Think about it. You have no... Power to align things that you have no control of in your hands. No, it is the nature within you that is transmitted through the interactions that you have that begins to create all of these changes. Only version two can initiate protocol. So if you want to experience God in a completely different way, all you need to do is desire transformation. Let there be a different you. You gave your life to Christ 10 years ago, but you are still cursing out today. You are still acting the same way. They say, our bro hasn't changed. Oh, sis hasn't changed. There's no transformation. There's no transformation. And when you are not experiencing that, guess what? Whatever you are experiencing at that time seemingly looks like purpose, but it's not. It's not because the word of God says it. It will reveal itself in transformation because there's a likelihood that you will be walking out of line. You will be walking in, the different, in different directions because you cannot see where God is leading you. Tell your neighbor transformation. transformation. Tell your neighbor transformation. transformation. Availability precedes transformation. God wants you to make yourself available for him to transform you. And, transform, and transformation is tangible. Please, it's tangible because I see people scoring themselves, saying, I'm a different person. Ah, it's not you that can tell whether you're a different person. I will experience you. You have not changed. <laughs> so don't tell me you're a different person. So I'm kind. How can you know you are kind? When you are being wicked to me right now, you say you are kind. No, you are not kind. You are still the same old you, version 1.246. You have not changed. And then some people are even backing up their upgrade. 
They are going back to version one because they are tired of 1.96 because they did is <laughs> You know when you go and upgrade to something, you're waiting for the new version. That's what I put that you see that computer. Is that if you are using Microsoft? That's when you see the computer crashing a lot. In those days, now nah, I don't think it happens like that. Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know Microsoft will say people will say yes. It still crashes a lot of the time. But what what happens is it is not it is it is not the old you that initiates changes. It's not the old you. To so seek out a transformative power of God upon your life by his word. Sit down on his word. I said this earlier in the first service. You know, you get up, get up in the morning or during the day, and then there's some people, they will just take the word and then flick on one scripture and then start reading. Then next day, they will put their hands, flick on another scripture and start reading. Guess what? Guess what? It works. I'm sure you're expecting something different. Don't let, don't let the devil fool, fool, fool us. The devil, all he wants to do is take you away from connecting with God. Anything that is not simple, he knows that you will find problems with it because you will say it cannot be God. So, because you feel like, how can I just click on some, put my hand somewhere, open a page, how can I feel like I'm connecting with God? The power is not in you flicking it, the power is in the word. And every word in scripture has power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every word in scripture has power. So no matter where you open to, whether you close your eyes and sing zimbi zimbi or whatever you want to do, whatever you open in scripture, whatever you open, there's power in that word. And the more you do it, the more you get a bigger picture. So forget about what the enemy is telling you. I will get to that point later on. But always remember that your version 2 is what initiates protocol. The, the key thing here to look at is your patterns. Is the patterns that we live our lives by that govern us, that make us who we are. The things that we do. What do people see when they look at you? The first scripture we read, second scripture we read that talked about being engrafted in Christ. What people do is they see them, people see you and see Christ. So because Christ is is not the major force in your life, people see, see, still see an incapable reflection of you. But what people need to see, what the scripture says they're about engrafted in Christ, is I am in Christ. I am still there. But who do you see? Me. God wants people to see him, his nature, and not you. That's why he talks about a reflection as in the mirror. He wants people to see him and not you. Why? Because you are hidden in Christ. So you have to chase, you have to pursue every opportunity that allows you to be engrafted in Christ. See, if you are looking at a puzzle that has been put together, the first thing that comes to your eye is not the individual pieces. You know what it is? It's the whole picture. And that's what God wants. He does, that's the way your imperfection gets hidden. That's the way your inabilities get hidden. That's why I say God does not need your skill, does not need anything from you. He just needs your availability. So once you can be there to plug yourself in, what people will end up seeing is him, you in him. So that's one way to build, that's one way to look at things. What is your pattern? What are the, what are the patterns that the world has that you are imbibing? What is the way the world is operating that you are looking at? Because especially, I, I feel, and I'm glad that, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that I'm married because the things I read on the internet, I see on social media, on relationships, my God, is scary. It is so scary. All kind of stupid information <laughs> floating around, stupendous stupidity information in every sense of it. And the person is saying it with so much alacrity using all the words and the grammar. And then people say, hmm, hmm, you're yeah, saying nonsense. Hmm, yeah, wow, wow, wow. I didn't think of it like, nonsense. Absolute rubbish. What's it called? Rubbish. It's, what they are saying is senseless. You know what I know? If it's not connected to the word, it doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense. When the word says, do not conform to the pattern of the world, it's saying that for a re- That's the devil. He's saying that for a reason. Because 
What seems right to a man is the end thereof that leads to destruction. So what you think looks good or sounds good is not the way. It's not what God intends for you. It has a different intention that will lead you to where you need to go to. When the world tries to make sense of something, what God will say will not make sense. But it is God's word and it will work. But many of us, because we are so used to compl- making things complicated, we want to complicate even the word. And Paul said, the power of God is in his simplicity. But we want to, if it's not complicated, if it's not a rhyming rhyme, then we feel like this word doesn't have power. If it's not something that makes it, mm, mm, wow, word, 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 wow, 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 wow. If it's not that, then that word does not have an effect. And God is saying, get thee behind me, Satan. Leave this man. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. Simple. But what we want is for a form of exegesis and all kinds of things to be said and done. Then we feel, oh, yeah, power is here. Power. Power. Ah, I can feel the power too. If I open your eye before you fall. <laughs> what power? I remember when I was young. I lie not to you. I lie not to you. I just remember this story. When I was very young, I went to a Christian school. I will not mention the name of the school so they don't sue me. I went to a Christian because it's a big school. I went to the school that was then when it started. And the, not only me though, I have to say this before people think that I'm a bad person. There were many troublemakers in the school. <laughs> and they just, I don't know why, they just added me to them. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I thought I was very, very a good person. I thought I was a nice young man. I was only 14. How can I be creating havoc in a school? I didn't see the point. But they just dragged me and said, you know, you guys are troublemakers in school. So we're going to d- pray that God will deliver all of you deliverance. So I, we didn't know. They just ambushed us. They just called about seven of us. So we got there, and they said, line up. So we're asking, ah, what's going on? I say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That's what we just said throughout. I, I'm not telling you what, how I remember it, and it just making me laugh. I say, ah. The next thing, the priest just came in. I say, ah, this is problem or priest. <laughs> ah, there's no evil spirit in me. My father, has, my father has already beaten it out of me before I left him. <laughs> I'm not coming here. They want to do another one. So they started. Yeah, do, do, do. You know, Ha, then the person fell down. I said, ah. <laughs> and I was at the end. I said, ah, this is what you call beating. They are actually beating you, but they say they are praying for you. And they kept going, 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 going. And you know, when they are praying, the, the way they will be shaking your head, it's little kids, just stressing our destiny unnecessarily. <laughs> shaking our head. So when they got to me, guess what I did? As soon as they touched me, I just fell down. <laughs> I said, I don't, have, I don't have room for anything here. But that's when the story ended. Because we feel that, ah, until you shake and I fell down. Two minutes later, the teachers and the, and the priests started discussing the students, mentioning names. So I went back to the dormitory to go and announce to them that, ah, they are coming for you, they are coming for you, they are coming for you, they are coming for you. <laughs> so it's, it is not the falling down that changes anything. You can see all of a sudden in this dispensation, there's less of that. Because that is not just where the power of God lies. That's not where it is. It is in the exhibition of it. By their fruit, you will know that. Let me see what you produce, then I will know that God is with you. I've lived in that whole environment and the chaos it has caused. Let us see the evidence. When something comes into you, let us see the change. I said in the first service, my wife and I, you know, when she met me, you know, we started dating. I said it in first said, we just started dating. I don't know, men, just think, think hard before you start doing certain things. I just asked out. And you know when I love you, you are blind. Love is actually blind. You know that. I just went into the whole relationship just before Valentine. And I didn't have money. I was broke legs, broken, shattered, and <laughs> apart. Nothing. And I chose to start just before Valentine. I lie not to you. And then Valentine's Day came. She didn't hear from me. <laughs> in the morning. And she, she walks in the city. People are bringing flowers to everybody, all kinds of things. And she's sitting down there. Ha, ah, what's going on? Whereas your boy is just sitting at home, like there is no money anyway. <laughs> I didn't even have money to call myself. <laughs> I just sat down there. 
afternoon. I just laugh at my phone like, okay, this is the end. Evening. So when she got back home, she now called me. Some, some, some ladies, you are not even calling. As, at, at the, in the end of the day, that's it, you are gone. Like, this one, if you cannot call me all through the day, there is no hope here. He is a wayward individual. Mind you, yes, that this was during the time that you have to be topping up your credit, but still, I did not have money to buy the top up. Five pound top up. Two, even if it's one pound, two pound top up. I, did, I said I had no money to call myself. <laughs> so, she now called me, said, oh, where are you? I said, oh, that I'm home. She said, ah, I didn't hear from you all day. Nothing at all. What's going on? <sighs> I had to swallow everything. And I said, I had no credit. And she was quiet for a while. You could tell that she was trying to calm her madness at that point in time. <laughs> That's why it's important. See what I said earlier about when God tells you something. It's not the way the world will say it. Because a lot of all these things you are listening on social media is not the way God wants you to always do things. It might be different. It doesn't even have to go your way where you meet someone that is broke, scattered, and shattered on the legs. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be that. But sometimes the way God will direct you is not the way the world is thinking as well. So at the time, but because she was connected to God, as his div her divine connect, she was in there, she stuck to the process. And I said, I don't know. She said, okay. After a while, I said, okay, I'll come and pick you. So she came to pick me. I didn't even have bicycle. She came to pick me. I, I said I would cycle to the station at least or something. So at least I know I covered a mile. You understand what I mean? <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't cover a mile, Bali. Not a mile. What a disgrace. And then, <laughs> and then, we now got to the, she got, she got to my house. She said, she, she just called me, I'm outside. Let's go. I said, to where? She said, just come, let's go. So she, I came and then we drove. She took me somewhere and then she, we had dinner. She paid for it and everything. And you're saying, oh, uh, 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 uh. you will not do it. Uh, you like stories. Uh, uh. You will not do it. You will not do it. I know you. You won't do it. You will not do it. You come to me and come and say, ah, this guy, pastor, is broke. <laughs> you won't do it. You won't do it. Don't do it. You don't need to do it. Ah, don't worry. I know all of you. You understand? And, and that was it. But because she stuck to the plan that God gave her purpose, connecting to him on something that did not look like what it was, the story different today. Amen. Completely different. You have no idea. I mean, very, 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 very different. I am not saying this. I am not saying this to pride in anything. I'm saying this for you to understand what it means to walk in the plan and the will with God. Because God, a lot of the time, will not give you a chair. He will give you a tree. So if everyone is sitting down expecting a chair... You end up waiting. That's why we have many people who are waiting and getting nothing. Because you are waiting on a chair. It's only those that are looking for trees that are moving on. Some people will get this later on. You will get it later. And as a result of that, I was saying to her yesterday, we were talking yesterday, because of how she is with money and how, what, she, what we have been through, my wife controls my money. I earn money, but... At the end of every month, she knows me. I like to escape. She will look for me in any room I am in the house. And she will say, babe, um, has that job paid? Because I have a spreadsheet that I submit to her. That she looks at all the various jobs and contracts I'm working on and payments when it's due. So when she sees the date, bling, bling, due, she's coming to look for me. And she knows the money has been transferred because of the way I'll be behaving. <laughs> So she would say, can you transfer that money? Every single dime I transfer. But you see why that trust is there? Because I know what she has done. So I'm going at a whole me. She'll be giving me transfer money. <laughs> a whole me. After everything I've earned, she will now say, yeah, this is 50 pounds for you for the week. A whole me. <laughs> so please, babe, up it. It can't be, it can't be 50 pounds. <laughs> I had to put it on blast here so that you, you all can help me. 50 pounds. 
50 pounds for a brother, please. Up it, up it, up it, up it. If I go anywhere and I buy anything, her phone will ping. Babe, where are you? Yeah. <sighs> what is this? But why am I saying this? That this connection is divine because from the very beginning, we were not following the pattern of the world because originally, based on what she was doing, I'm not the kind of person that she would be with. I'm not, and I know it. I'm not. Likewise, we went somewhere one day, and I just noticed that, you know, you see people in high heels, you go for events and parties. Or I just noticed that she just kind of like close to me. I know she's taller than I am. I was like, ah. I just looked, I said, why are you wearing flats? She's even wearing one today. I said, why are you wearing flats? She said, oh, because I'm, I'm taller than you. I said, eh? My friend, will you wear your heels? I said, so when I want to kiss, I'm, let me jump. Are you, are you joking? I am confident in who I am. Whether I am five feet six, I don't care. I do not care. <laughs> they are clapping now. But when is your turn for you to look at things as they are? Then is a problem. Be confident in who you are. And I will quickly run through three, three things quickly. Yeah? Watch what you say. Yeah? Watch what you say. Reshape the pattern of your voice. Speak right. You see what I just said? Don't let anyone say things that don't pertain to your destiny. Neither should you speak things that don't pertain to your destiny. Always be mindful of what you are saying. Always be mindful of the words that, you, that come out from your mouth. Many of us have said things and carry things that do not belong to us. That even when God calls on the devil, the devil is saying, God, I have nothing to do with this, I promise you. Because you are yourself have just carried those things by the words of your mouth. Be confident in who you are. What has the devil told you? That you are not capable of marrying. You are not capable of having a business. You are not good looking enough. That's a lie from the devil. Say to yourself, I am good looking enough. I am good enough to get a husband. I am good enough to get a wife. I am good enough to start a business. I am skilled enough. Because you are not relying on your capability. You are relying on the divine nature of God within you. But when you are looking at your physical capabilities, that's when you will see limitations. You need to begin to see things from the way God is looking at things. That way, let it dictate what you are saying. Also, you need to be able to act right. Act accordingly. Don't let people see you and think that nothing has changed about you. You can't tell them anything. Our testament of what we believe in and who we are is not in what we say to people. It is in what we do. That's how people can believe in what we believe in. As I said earlier, do people come around you and just... They just swear anyhow. They just say things. Are they comfortable with just talking about all sorts of things around you without you telling them who you are? Because the calf, as I said earlier, the calf, the calf worshippers, the calf worshippers, you know who they are? The calf worshippers, the children of Israel. They knew something had changed when Moses came down from the mountain. Let people know that something has changed. Let people know. And then lastly, think right. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are good, think on these things. Meditate on God's word. Let the thoughts, let the things that go through your mind be things that will edify you. That's the way you can begin to walk in alignment with God. Let your mind be filled with the word of God. Let your mind be filled with the word of God. Let your mind be full with the word of God. Let it be the precept, the line by line, everything that God is saying. Let that fill up your mind. That way, whatever the patterns that come in front of you, they will not stick they will move. Because it is only your version 2 that can initiate protocol. Just remember that. For you to walk in line with the call that God has designed for you, it is only your version 2 that can initiate protocol. So in everything we do, as he said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse, verse 1, to 3 to 9, it talks about, so therefore, to partake in these promises and the divine nature, strive, and do everything you can to go after godliness, to go after kindness, to go after love, you know, all of these things. So there's an effort that is required from us. Don't just stay the way you are. When you leave here, when you come back next week, be a different person. Let people, when you get back to work, let people know that things are changing in your life. 
the people that you talk to in a year's time, let them know that this person is not the same as they were years ago. You had unbelievers as friends, loads of them, a whole bank of them, a whole army of them. All of a sudden, five years later, you still blend well and easy with them. You have not transformed. I'm just telling you as it is. Say it as it is. Just telling you as it is. It means you have not transformed. They should know something is different. And whatever they possess should repel you. That's what um, Mr. Deborah said last week. It should, it should repel you in, from them. They should feel like a disconnect just because of what is now within you and what you're operating under. So it is only your version two that can initiate protocol. So as you live here, I want us to begin to initiate protocol for transformation in our lives, to initiate changes in our lives that will allow us to walk in line and the purpose and his will for us. It's not asking, what is my purpose? What is my will? Connect with God. As you do that with God, connect with God automatically, he will begin to initiate protocol and you'll begin to see transformations that will begin to lead you in the right place. He said, the, 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 the word is a lamp unto my feet. That word will begin to lead you where you need to go. Everywhere else will look like darkness. Anybody who sees light, if you are trying to head somewhere, do you go to where it's dark? You follow the light. So automatically, your, your spiritual senses begin to follow that light and that's how God leads you to where you need to go to. You don't necessarily need to know exactly where it is. You just follow the light and then then you get your place of destiny. Version 2, not version 1.9654321. It does not do anything. It just makes you more self. That's what the word is preaching, self-awareness. Self-awareness. You see, he said, there's a scripture where he talks about how the spirit of God, he said, let the spirit of God take over you like a man drunken with wine. A man drunken with wine, he can't walk straight. Even if he wants to walk straight, the line is here. He, he will do this because he thinks the line is here. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. Let the Spirit of God overtake you. So until it overtakes you, you are not going to be able to walk out of self. You will always be walking in self. Because in self, you are walking in a different direction. You are walking in self-direction. But when you walk with the Spirit of God and you have that transformative nature within you, you find yourself following a nature that is not originally your version one's nature. Amen? Let your pattern change. Let your pattern reflect in new creation that God has molded and made within you spiritually and physically. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. I hope you were blessed this morning with the word of God. They can never sleep on my name. My name. They can never play me out the game. Out the game. They can never put me to shame. I'm, I'm a winner, 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 winner. They can never sleep on my name. My name.